Tyson Moyers is the district athletic director for Cape Public Schools. He previously served the Cape Central High School, served as Cape Central High School AD for three years before being promoted this year. Recently, he was recognized as a certified athletic administrator by the National Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association and the MIAAA named him the 2023 Missouri Athletic Director of the Year. Tyson, that's quite an intro. <laughs> Congratulations Thank to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm very blessed. I appreciate it. It's good to have you here. Um, we were talking uh, beforehand. Uh, so you, you were at Cape Central as the athletic director. So that, that job has kind of morphed into the entire district. Is that correct? Yes, I moved to, a, uh, um, to the district athletic director's job this year uh, under the guidance of Dr. Glass and the board. Uh, we saw some needs uh, across our district. Our participation rate was really low at the high school, and, and, and in the, the way we looked to, to boost that was uh, improving our participation rate at our lower levels, uh, third through sixth grade, uh, to be able to try to uh, um, increase that later on as the years as they got into the high school level. Now, I'm not the high school athletic director. Andy McGill currently right. is the high school athletic director. Okay. So when I moved into that position, he took over as high school AD. And some of those things that you've been doing, I know you're kind of groundbreaking to a degree with uh, how you've partnered with the city and, and some of the grade schools. And I can't, I can't say enough of our, our uh, the Cape Parks and Rec Department uh, and their leadership. Uh, you know, we, we came to them with this idea and, and it's changed some things about how they go about it. And I mean, you coach in the leagues, you, you, you've seen some of those changes. Uh, but they've been great about uh, uh, making some adjustments where we can get more of our students participating at those levels. Uh, we've been real fortunate. It's really taken off this year. Uh, obviously, we want to grow those programs. Uh, we've had our basketball programs this, this, uh, this past winter where we had uh, a boys program at each of the, the five elementaries and three at the, on the girls, in the girls' side of it. And then at the middle school, we had uh, six boys' teams and, and, and uh, five girls' teams. So. Uh, that was a great start, and then we just rolled right into soccer and baseball and softball and track the spring. So those numbers have been really increased from what the city has seen in, the, in years past. So we're really proud of that. And as you said, the goal is to increase participation at an early age. Yes. Uh, it, involvement in athletics is a proven driver of success uh, for behavior attendance and, and success after, after school. We see that uh, across the board. Uh, the, you know, many studies have, have, have been have, see, have shown that. So what we want is the ability to expose our kids to those at an early age, so they will participate more at the at the junior high, and middle school levels, and we can see that success uh, for those students as we go forward. And I would imagine with there being, you know, there's there's travel teams, there's you know, all, there's a lot more avenues now for someone to participate. But again, like we're talking with Dr. Glass about, you know, playing for your school, there's something special about that. That was part of the uh, initial process we talked about. It's like, you know, we want those kids to have pride that they're a, uh, a you know, a, 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 Blan a play for Blanchard or play for Franklin or play for Clippard, any of our five elementaries. And then when they get to the middle school, yes, they come together, but they're still, they, they might be uh, the CMS Orange or the CMS Black. We want that community uh, uh, pride within our schools, within our elementary schools and our middle school. The other thing the city has seen, and we, we've seen as we attend these events, the number of our parents that are showing up and watching these events has skyrocketed. It's awesome that, that, that our community members are also coming to basketball games and softball games and, and, and all of our sports to support their, their kids and uh, members of their uh, other schools. Are our parents uh Kind of the primary coaches still at that young age? Yes, we have leaned on a lot of our parents. But we also uh, use some of our high school coaches, our junior high coaches, some of our teachers in our buildings have, have stepped up and, and, and taken on those roles. That's always a, a challenge. So if you want to coach, you know, you're, you're more than welcome. Make sure and contact me. I, I, I could put you in a spot, I promise you. Uh, so we're always looking for coaches. We're always looking for quality coaches to help lead our, our uh, students. So, y yes, w w that's the, the main group of people that are coaching our kids, but that's usually what happens with our, within our youth programs anyway. So we welcome that um, because they're connected to those students as well. I, I know, as you mentioned, you mentioned all the statistics that show, you know, the benefit of being involved in sports. 
Uh, I think it also goes back to that Tiger pride that we talked about, you know, when you have a strong athletic program along with the other programs that are that are strong as well. Just it just kind of galvanizes that community even more around around the, the district. No doubt. I mean, it, 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 the athletics are the front porch of your school. All right. That, that's what people see the most of. They see it in the paper. They see it in, uh, uh, in on KFES and, and throughout our community. That's what they see the most. I mean, you look at the success we've had this year with our football program, our boys basketball program, and, and other programs throughout our, our school that uh, highlight uh, such a great and put a great light on our school. And, that, and that's not the only great things that are happening in our schools. I wish people could see all of the things that our our teachers and our students do on a daily basis because it is really, as, as Dr. Glass said, fascinating at how much work they put in and, and the good things that they are doing, not just in the athletic world, but in academics as well. We use that, that kind of that front porch, front door, you know, analogy. It, it kind of, it, it helps bring, helps highlight the other things just whenever the focus is, is more on the school. Um, and when you have a, a wonderful, you know, basketball team or football team, you can't really buy that marketing, you know? Well, I mean, you think about it. We, yes, we, we, we had a great season in, in both, both football and basketball, but what else did we, were we able to do? Your football, the football team's playing there on, in the stadium. Well, the marching band is, is playing there as well. Our JRTC, our cheerleaders, our, our dancers, all those things are getting highlighted as well. So even though the football is the, is the main focus, the game is the main focus for both football and basketball, the, there are other things that are getting also getting celebrated as part of their uh, uh, commitment. Just about a, uh, 45 seconds here left. So I know you said third and fourth grade right now is where you're at. You, you're hoping to maybe grow that into the even younger younger yeah, grades. We're, we're talking about uh, expanding that some of our programming down to first and second grade. Uh, we haven't finalized those plans. We've talked to the city with it. And they, they're on board, uh, but just in targeting those sports that we're already I involved in. Uh, you know, currently we we do basketball, soccer, track and field. Baseball, softball. In the fall, we'll be we'll be uh, doing football uh, in partnership with the city, as well as as volleyball. So, in, in the ones we're already involved in, we'd like to expand those to first and second grade. But that's that's something we're we're still finalizing. And if you're a parent in the school district or a new parent, this is something that you will let them know about. They'll register through the through the school. Yes, our final forms website is what they'll go through to register the school. Then they'll get emails from me, basically letting them know, hey, this is this is when uh, this is your coach, and this is when they're going to set up practice times, and uh, it, that's the the avenue we use to communicate. Yes. Now, do you do you get called coach around the district, or are you? When I first came in as the athletic director, you know, I coached for 19 years right. in my in my previous role, and that's just what I'm used to being called. So I said, hey, just keep calling me Coach Moyers. I'm not I'm not an athletic coach anymore. I feel like part of my job is coaching the coaches, uh, but that that's that's makes. It is a special moniker to me. Sure, I mean, coaches is, is. I still call them my coaches that I had in high school. I call them coach. I don't. I don't. I don't call me anything else because it, it, that's a special um, uh, profession. Well, Tyson, congratulations. Uh, obviously, we heard the awards that you have uh, accumulated and starting this program uh, at, at the public school level with the city of Cape. Uh, congratulations and best of luck. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate you.